All right, guys, so number two, attainment of psychoactive effects is not required for attainment of symptom control. This is in line with the first principle of starting low and going slow, and this is also often overlooked. This tends to be better understood in patients who are seeking cannabis as a last resort, or if they are just new patients, they're not looking to get high, they just want relief. For those of you who are still trying to go for the highest THC containing products, let me just remind you, those are not always better. Sometimes this can be counterproductive and here's why. You can get too high and this is the bad kind of high. Especially in new patients when first starting out with high THC containing products, this is more likely going to happen than not and this will usually deter you from trying again, so we want to avoid this at all costs. A better idea would be to start with CBD or the CBD to THC ratios like we kind of already mentioned. When you include the non-psychoactive cannabinoids in the product that you're using, in combination with THC, this modulates the effect of THC. So you really don't even need that much in the product and you'll still feel the effect. What's more, observational studies have yielded the following information. When limonene is added to THC, it's more cerebral and uplifting. When you add myrcene to THC, it's more calming, sedative, and sleepy. However, when you add limonene and myrcene and THC, it's more cannabimimetic than THC alone. Also, it's been shown that THC taken alone can be more dysphoric than euphoric, and THC alone has a narrower therapeutic index than the CBD THC products. And more on the dysphoria with THC. Sometimes too much THC can actually worsen or exacerbate the symptom that we were initially trying to have control for in the first place. A great example of this is anxiety. A little bit of THC for anxiety goes a long way. However, too much THC can actually exacerbate or worsen the anxiety and give you the paranoia. And this is because THC exhibits a biphasic dose response curve. This curve shows that there is a threshold at which you will experience your optimal cannabis dose. This threshold differs by person, by underlying endocannabinoid tone, by even the route of administration that you're gonna be using, and by the condition. So, below this threshold, as you increase the dose, you will increase the likelihood for therapeutic benefits. However, once you move beyond this dose, you may experience diminished therapeutic benefit and even some side effects like we kind of just mentioned. And lastly, using high THC containing products can usually lead to a tolerance. This may or may not be a good thing depending on the situation. If this is not desirable, I have a way to decrease your tolerance. There is something called the sensitization protocol that was popularized by Dr. Sulak that we will mention in another video soon. However, sometimes gaining tolerance is desirable and this kind of brings us back to the initial point. You don't always need to feel the psychoactivity to get the relief. So patients can develop a tolerance to the psychoactivity of cannabis rather quickly, like over a period of days, without concomitant tolerance to the benefits. This is in stark contrast to many other pharmaceuticals like opioids too. Some other non-psychoactive strategies to utilize while using cannabis are using the acidic preparations like THCA, CBDA, CBGA, using the topical application of cannabis like lotions, balms, salves, transdermal patches, and then even microdosing cannabis. These are all ways to use cannabis without getting the psychoactivity involved. You can incorporate this in your day, still function, still have a quality of life, and you're controlling the symptoms. What's not to like? I'll see you next time.